Today's video is proudly powered by our partner, Oxide Hosting. Get your products hosted by them with their cheap, reliable services. So what are you waiting for? Check them out in the description below. Yo guys, what's up? This is Camus from Minidops coming back to you again with another video. Today, we're going to be showing you how to use Models in Disney. So Models are a really cool new Discord feature, which is basically an input form. Uh, currently, they only support text input, but in the future, you know, here's the hoping Discord adds like dropdowns uh, and selections and all of those nice things. But we're gonna show you how to create one two different ways in this snack. So we're going to start off by subclassing model, and then we're going to dive into sending a raw one, which doesn't require a subclass and it's a bit more low level. But for now, let's dive into the subclass high level. And so essentially you just want to make a class, which subclasses this next uh, model or model class. And there's two required arguments there. So that is the title and the component. So the title is, you know, what pops up on your form. So let's just go title of model, really simple. And then components is a list of different UI options. So we're gonna go destinate.ui.text input. We're just gonna initialize that class and let's do some really nice formatting on this in a bit, but we're gonna give it a label. So the label is what shows up above the input. So let's go, let's go name because we're gonna make some tag. And then let's give it a placeholder. So a, pay, a placeholder is pretty much uh, what pops up on the input form or the input area when there's actually no input. We'll just go placeholder name. And then we're going to give it a custom ID. So the way custom IDs work on models, so we need to give them for text input as well as we're going to give it in the super core. And it's just how the snake uh, differentiates between fields. So with the text input, the custom ID here is actually going to be the key uh, for the key value text values that Discord gives us back but we'll cover that a bit later on in the video. So we'll just give this a uh, ID of name and then let's also give it a max length of 25. So you don't have to provide the max length there, but we we don't want big names. Uh, so we're just going to click 25. Now I've created a slash command here uh, and set it to our testing guild and we send the modal with modal equals an in instance of our class. Uh, you don't have to worry about this too much. You can send it to any interaction uh, and we're not going to cover slash commands in this video because that's a separate topic. So if we go ahead and just run this code really quick, dive into Discord here. And then if we go slash send, we'll go send model. We'll go ahead and send that. We'll notice it pops up with the title and then we've got the name shows that it's required as well as the placeholder that we define. So if we go ahead and say, this is a placeholder name, we'll see that it stops me there because this is a placeholder name, it's actually 26 characters and we set a limit of 25. The Discord's really nice and they actually enforce that limit themselves, which is great for us. So now if we go ahead and just click submit, we'll notice that nothing actually happens and that's because we haven't actually responded yet. So Discord clicks submit, when we click submit, Discord sends the data back to our bot and then we need to process that data. So if we dive into our bot here, the way we do that with the subclass is we override the callback class, callback method on the class. Delete these uh, pipe pins from PyCharm. And then let's go ahead, let's say we're gonna make it an embed, this name, embed, where the title is going to be tag creation because you know we're making a tag with the input. And then we're going to loop over something called in interaction dot text values or items so these text values are a dictionary of the components that we've defined so currently the only item in that dictionary will be the key name and then whatever the end user puts in there but we're just going to add the field there so we'll go name is equal to key and then we'll just leave it at that we could capitalize that if we wanted to and then let's go inline is false and then finally, we have to just actually send this to Discord. So we have to acknowledge that interaction and we'll just go send message and we'll pass it embed as the embed. So we'll go ahead, we'll run this now, pop back into Discord. And if we send that mode out and now we type, type in a good name and click submit, you'll notice that it's responded, it's closed it and it's sent that embed. So we'll see how our custom ID here is actually the key in the dictionary and then the value is what the end user typed in. So you can imagine some good use cases for that. Now, this form isn't really useful to me at least. It's got pretty much nothing in it. What's a tag without a description? So let's go ahead, let's add another one. This name, the UI text. We'll give it a name, sorry, a label of description. 
let's go placeholder is equal to you guessed it placeholder description and let's give it a custom id of description now how big should a description be that's up to you personally we're putting it in an embed so i'm gonna limit that to 1000 so now we can go ahead we can rerun it that's the only change we need to do and now if we resend our model here we'll notice that it's popped up but i've got a thousand characters here and if we just put h's in here right you know that's pretty that's pretty bland that's pretty that's pretty meh uh, we don't really want to be doing that for our big input so there is actually a way to change the way that looks on the end client so there is a style argument here which takes in the text input style that we've imported up the top here and if we hit dot here we can see all of the different input types so currently they only support uh, you know paragraph and short uh, the short is the default which we can see on the form currently but if we pick paragraph and now we rerun that modal we can go back down here go send modal and now it's changed it from a little input up here to a nice little box and it's got a character count at the bottom to show how many are left this code does that validation you know they also validate the placeholder names we got name and let's replace these with all h's <clears throat> hit submit and we can see that it's worked like a charm another note is that there are some extra options that we can call for the model here when we're subclassing it is there is a timeout field so we have to provide a timeout uh, for discord um, that's just sort of the way they've decided to implement models and there is also a custom id now technically this is not required however it is a good idea to set this uh, so we're going to apply level tag now this snake will give you a pseudo random custom id um, to make sure you know that it's random on your bot but it's better to just code that in there yourself and that way you can use weight fours and things in a bit more low level as well in conjunction with this model but we'll dive into that a little bit more just in a minute so now that we've got our high level overview let's go ahead and start on the low level oh so let's dive into a low level so we're gonna need another slash command that's for sure so let's go ahead and make another one for async death low model really really in there we'll type in that to the application commander direction give it a nice little dark screen saying hey look uh, you yeah. know subclasses format that nicely and let's go ahead so all we actually have to do is go wait enter dot response dot send model so you can already see it's pretty much the same as previously but here's where it changes so we're changing the custom id and we're setting that equal to model custom id this let's put a low in there to make sure that we're you know good we don't want to be conflicting with the high level tag up there we're not so we're okay now for title let's go ahead and mimic our subclass so we're just going to uh, tag creation for the title not quite the same but close enough and then in terms of components we can actually just copy and paste our original components from the subclass there and paste them in here and that's actually all we have to do so if we go ahead and we jump in here let's go slash let's wait for that to pop up and you'll see that it sends us some on. Now, of course, you know, we put D's in there. That's not actually all we have to do. We do have to acknowledge that modal and respond like we did in the callback here. But unlike the callback, there is no subclass method that we can overwrite. So we're actually just going to use a topic which I'm sure most of you are already familiar with, and that is the wait for method. So We'll define a variable called model enter, which is this snake dot model interaction, and we'll set that equal to bot dot wait for. The event we were looking to wait for is model submit, and then the check itself is going to just be a lambda, which takes an i, ignore the truck outside of a door, where i is going to be the interaction itself. So we want to make sure that i's custom ID is equal to our custom id so we'll do that 
and we want to make sure that the person sending that modal so i to author.id is equal to the person who ran this command for author.id save that give it some formatting and let's time that out after 300 seconds now that's pretty much the same this is essentially like that callback method where by the time we get to where we are currently with the cursor we know that the form and the modal has been submitted and now we just need to respond and how do we respond well we're making a tags so we can just copy and paste our callback code down here change interaction to model interaction and model interaction not v and that should be all it's really quite that simple we'll go ahead and let's send this you see that it's saved it there on discord side as well because we've got that nice custom id going discord does some caching if you get it right which we did this time your name and let's go description and then let's submit that and we can see that it's worked perfectly fine it's in the name it's in the description now as an example of this let's go ahead and change the custom ids from name to my hands on the keyboard just to show you uh, what i was meaning about the keys and values before if we go ahead and resend this and we hit submit we'll see that now instead of it being called name it's called the jangled mess that was me bashing my keyboard so that's just showing you that the keys and values and text values is actually set by the custom id and then the value is what the user submitted anyway that's been a quick overview of models at the sink. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Peace.